Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today I want to tackle something a little unusual, and I want to have some fun basically. Paint something out of the ordinary with the Imperial Guard, or Astra Militarum if that's what you're going to stick with. Now these guys, the miniatures have been around for a while, you know, the 2003 was when the Plastic Cadians were launched, and in that time we've seen all sorts of different colour schemes. One of the recurring ones that comes up is when people want to do four say an urban themed guard army, almost always you see the black and the grey come out. And I tell you something, most cities I've been to aren't just flat black and grey. So this one, I'm calling it urban. <laughs> um, I get kind of a, a rad waste or hazardous environment feel from it as well, but honestly that's up to you. I think it looks pretty cool. As always, all of the uh, paints will be listed in the description below. There's actually not very many for this one, so bonus if you're uh, looking for an easy way to do something a bit unusual on the cheap. So without any further mucking around, let's get started. So to begin with, I've given this guy a primer of Storm Vermin Fur. Now, unfortunately, this is a spray which has actually been discontinued, but you can still find, <laughs> for some reason, it didn't sell very well while it was going, so you can still find it in a lot of independent stockists. Uh, if you do want to use this color and you can't find the primer, you can start with any sort of mid-tone gray, like Mechanica Standard Gray, and just give it a couple of coats of Storm Vermin Fur from the pot. It'll look much the same. I've started with the primer because I have it, and I want to save some time. So what I want to do is introduce you to the camo brush. This one came out of the uh, stationery aisle in a local, you know, I guess in America you'd call it a drugstore, a uh, place like Boots or the supermarket, anywhere like that. And it's this little flat brush, very cheap, and it frays at the end quite quickly. But that's ideal for what we're going to do. So let's start off. I've got here Steel Legion Drab, and we're going to add some basic camo pattern to them. All I'm doing is I've just got some dabbing it onto my palette. Uh, I don't need a great deal of water in this. I think you're probably better off just not watering it down at all. What we'll do is we'll just start splotching some areas with this brown. Now when you come to the edge of his clothing, you know, remember that in reality these splotches would travel sort of over the edge of the pattern. So don't, don't leave the edges blank because it will look unnatural. Now after a couple of passes around the miniature, this is what we've got. And I've decided to try and go for about half of that uh, clothing in brown, and the other half still in our sort of green-gray thing going on. What I've got now is Jokero Orange, and whoo, whoo, this is a light one. <laughs> what I'm going to do is I want just a few splotches of this to sort of overlap between the brown and the gray. So I'm going to be a little more sparing with this than I did the brown. You don't want this to overpower the look. I'll just go around now and adding in little dabs of this. Don't worry too much if you do hit anywhere that's going to be armor or skin or what have you later. Now you'll probably find in some areas that you want to go back and sort of poke at those areas again with a little more orange. And where some areas will be slightly faded, you'll get stronger color towards the center, and I think that looks quite natural. What I've got now is because we have got the armor to paint yet, I'm actually going to go ahead and do the base coat on his skin, because getting in here later, you know, without uh, messing up the armor, is going to be a bit of a challenge. So just a little bit of Bugman's Glow. You see, it doesn't matter if I paint his, his armor. Away you go. You'll probably find this only needs the one coat, but Anywhere that you do get that uh, primer showing through, just come back and give it a second coat. Now with this skin base coated, we can move on and finally do his armor. And here's where we're going to step outside and do something, I think, a little more 40k. I've got corn red, and we're going to just paint over all of his armor panels. Carefully, of course. <laughs> Take your time. Uh, you will probably find this covers pretty well with one shot. But again, any areas that you see the uh, gray showing through, come back and give it another coat. Um, this is inspired actually by the M-A-S-S-T-E-R, yeah, Master, uh, color scheme. I saw this in a, a Flames of War, sorry, a Team Yankee painting guide. 
And uh, this is a little more extreme than what they've suggested. You know, it never went all the way up to red, but I figured, come on, we're playing 40k. We're doing rad wastes and far future combat. Things can be a little more unusual than our real world. So let's come back and see what this looks like when we're finished. And so the madness begins to come together. <laughs> what I've got now, this is Rhinox Hide. And we're just going to go around and fill in all of the leather details. So his boots, make sure to fill in his belt, and a couple of bits of equipment on his back here. Uh, you can fill in most of this in Rhinox Hide, and jobs are good. And then from here we'll get in and start painting some black details. Now I'm getting <laughs> a little bent out of shape here, just while I'm trying to get to these areas. It's worth pointing out while I think about it. When you look at the um, the regimental doctrines and stuff in the Astra Militarum Codex at the moment, a really good example is the Catachan one. You know, we always sort of tend to think of the Catachans as, oh, it's it's jungle terrain, it's what have you. But the stuff these days really only mentions, okay, they have a bonus with blast weapons and flamers, so they're really good up close, and they're really strong. But there's no reason you couldn't turn around and go, okay, well, these guys have a superior bayonet drill or something, which makes them you know, comparatively stronger in combat and up close and personal stuff. You know, that's that's pretty good with just about any, <laughs> any guard army. Same too with the Talan, you know, the whole strike and fade thing. Doesn't mention, um, you know, desert terrain. So... Have a look at what you think would suit the character of the army that you're coming up with. If you're doing something like this and you want to, you know, make up your own regiment, then it doesn't necessarily have to be bound by what the miniatures look like. As long as it makes sense, I think. And then really for the last stage of our base coats, let's just use a little lead belcher. I'm going to fill in as eagles with this. And we'll also paint in any metal details. So go around now, fill those bits in. Now once that's had a chance to dry thoroughly, we'll get our Agrax Earthshade, give it a good shake, and away we go. Just start applying this all over the model. Make sure that you are, you know, really working it into the recesses so that you get that shading effect. Anywhere that it pulls a lot, like say on his leg here, get in while your brush is still wet and you can move it around and prevent any big ugly pulls. But whatever the case, let's go around now. Then we'll give this fella about 30-40 minutes to dry, unless we can find a nice <laughs> bright spot in the sun. Now after time to dry, this is what we've got, and what a difference it makes. You'll see that the brown that we use, that Steel Legion Drab, has blended into the, the grey underneath a little. Not to worry, we do want that to happen slightly. I've got here, this is Wazdaka Red, and we'll just go in and add a little bit of edge highlighting. Purely optional, of course, but I think this adds a little bit more to the model. As you, as you can hear while I'm concentrating, shh, whisper time. <laughs> but add as much or as little of this as you like. Go around now, particularly on the weapon, I think it will benefit from this. And then we'll get some Cadian Flesh Tone and just dot in a few areas on his face and the back of his hands. So nose and cheekbones are always a nice easy one if you want a really quick done face. And then because I do want relatively quick finish, uh, what we'll do is just go ahead and pop a base on him straight away. And there we have it, our soldier is complete. Now you can see that the brown did fade into the green a little bit after that shade, so in the future, I might use a slightly darker one, maybe something like Mournfang Brown or something instead of Steel Legion Drab, but I think that still works pretty well. Now, of course, all of this is just a suggestion. You can, of course, use whatever color you would like, and I really think that there's a lot of value to be had in experimenting with, you know, the massive range of colors that Citadel does. So have some fun, paint some Guardsmen, and see what you can come up with. So thanks very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, and all of the patrons who've helped make this one possible, including producers J. 
Jonathan Harris and Alan Nuttall. As always, any questions, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Facebook are both linked there too. Yeah, I'm liking that. <laughs> so thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.